Hi there, Ashley Reeve here. I'm back with another economic calendar update for all our traders. It's good to be with you guys. Before we get started, uh, please know that Quick Trade is a licensed financial service provider, as well as a licensed over-the-counter derivatives provider. Myself, a registered rep working under supervision, I'm authorized to offer advice. But remember, your risk, reward, and the execution of your trades still remains your responsibility. So as I've mentioned to you guys, it's good to be with you. This is another fun packed week. Uh, last week, we saw a bit of drama there. We had the consumer price index coming out, and there was definitely a shift. We saw some upside. We saw some downside. But ultimately, uh, it seems like the current trends uh, still prevail. But we're going to quickly look at our economic calendar, just see what happened last week in terms uh, of percentages and uh, what was lost, what was gained. And then we're going to look at a forecast, uh, what you can look out for in terms of opportunities but what will also be critical is for you to uh, get to the trading room. Make sure you're in there. We got such a, a great community in there that is growing every single day. And uh, we're doing a lot of technical uh, updates in there. We discuss fundamentals. We look for opportunities and we even enter trades. Let's quickly check out that uh, economic calendar or at least the forecast for this week. And as always, you guys do know, is that uh, your weekly snippet is out every Monday and you see the 17th of October and we have a couple of notes here. Last week was another uh, week of big swings on Wall Street. You should have seen the NASDAQ, obviously the Dow Jones and the S&P. We had a very nice push up and then uh, there was a shift down, close lower. Uh, the big day, of course, was Thursday, as I mentioned, when major indexes put in one of the best days in quite a while. The moves were all data-driven traders, led by a better-than-expected CPI, for short, or Consumer Price Index. But then came Friday, and all those gains evaporated. Very, very nice statement there. It came, and then it was gone. Uh, and it was also data-driven, all right? The Dow closed the day down at 1.34%. The S&P lost 2.37%, while the Nasdaq shed 3.08%. Unfortunately, there was nothing superlative there to take away. This coming week is another important week with regards to earnings. Uh, traders, plenty of big names from diverse industries. This is your Bank of America, Tesla, Verizon, Communications and Abbott Laboratories, guys. This is so important. But just so you do know that the dollar index is still bullish. Uh, we have what it seems to be a, a good support at this moment in time. It looks like that retracement has come to an end. Remember, in my previous uh, updates, we are looking to go uh, to the one point between the 1.17 and one point uh, and 119 point area. Uh, that is bullish on the DXY. The NASDAQ is still down, the S&P is down, the uh, US 30 is down, and we're still seeing gold retreating down uh, to that 16 uh, uh, or that 1,600 point area. Uh, so please join the trading room to see more technical details on that. And then obviously your CFD's weekly forecast, we're still looking at our Brent. Uh, remember, as always, WTI and Brent crude. Uh, they do have a positive correlation. They don't always move exactly, uh, you know, at the same time, but they do move together in a positive or a negative channel. Uh, last week, we had a breakout to the upside in oil with OPEC opting to stay with a cut in production despite the U.S. president meeting the crown prince of Saudi Arabia uh, to ask for an increase in production. I believe there was about 2 million uh, barrels per day uh, cut. Uh, but we're going to obviously see what's happening uh, this week. If there's any new news, we're also looking at gold. Uh, I mentioned to you guys that it's, it is still retreating to a support area. It's still considered a fear factor instrument. And as mentioned last week, the U.S. dollar index, as well as the 10-year U.S. Treasury note yields, uh, they move uh, inversely proportionally to gold. Uh, so that simply means, as always, when gold uh, moves up, we'll normally see the dollar come down and vice versa. When the dollar goes up, we'll generally see gold come down. So they are great barom uh, barometers or gauges uh, for you to use in terms of tracking the movement of the market. As mentioned, NASDAQ is still down. Uh, the US 30 is still down and the S&P. And then obviously we have a uh, weekly uh, FX pay as well that we are looking for. This is more a uh, trade for the conservative traders that are looking to to hold the trade. 
Uh, that's the USD JPY based on the strength of the dollar. We're looking for a weekly push to resistance level 153.248. Uh, the pair is currently trading at a key monthly pivot point, and that's at 145.934. Please make sure that you obviously draw your levels after reading our weekly snippets so that you can obviously engage in the technical analysis yourself because every trader has a different approach. And so these levels... Uh, once they have been put into your chart, it gives perspective, but your approach might reveal that you are not comfortable with taking that specific trade. And so when you do your risk and reward and you are comfortable or, or uncomfortable, then obviously you can make a more informed decision. The suggestion is then to trade this specific pair to 153.248, but remember we need to first break the 148.547 level. That's for the more aggressive traders. And by the looks of things, that is a level that's broken on the shorter time frames. The more conservative trader will look for a daily candle close above 149.669 to go to that 153.248 area there. This is Ashley Reeve. This is our Monday morning EC or economic calendar forecast. I'll check in again with you guys later on in the week if there's anything urgent. But for now, please make sure you do your risk and your reward. Make sure that your technicals make sense. Make sure that there's fundamentals, uh, you know, that's connecting to them. And then obviously try to get yourself into that, uh, into our trading room. Remember, there's two uh, uh, sessions there, a 9.30 a.m. session and a 4 p.m. session. Uh, we also call that the recap. Until then, this is Ashley signing out.